morning, guys. I'm my radar meteorologist, Matt Bucci. We're taking a look at one of Aaron Jajak's coolest videos from Roswell, New Mexico, where he is shooting an epic hailstorm that just dropped giant hail in biblical proportions. So let's play through this, show folks exactly what's going on. Down here, you can kind of see the curtains of white as that hail is quickly approaching. Rain, hail, all sorts of stuff. And then look right here, this thing, this kind of curvature, that's the rotating supercell thunderstorm. So initially, there were a couple pockets of convection, shower and thunderstorm activity. They're kind of merging, kind of near each other. But finally, one supercell became dominant. And that's the one that tapped into the full dynamics of the atmosphere without competing with neighboring storms to produce an epic show. So actually, let's pause this right here. Actually, can we back out a little bit? Let's go back like one or two seconds. Yeah, perfect. So th this shows you kind of the isolated nature of that supercell. As soon as he changes the shot, we'll be able to see in just a second. Let's pause it when it's wide out. Perfect, right here. Nice, okay. I love this shot so much because we are looking, presumably, southwest towards a rotating supercell. So let's take a look at the supercell that instigated this big time hail. Because for starters, when you get to hail size, this baseball, softball size, you know that usually has to come from a supercell. The rotating updraft is integral in keeping the updraft and the downdraft separate, and that makes for the biggest hailstones. We're talking baseballs or larger. Over here, this is the rain-free base. This is where the air is going up, spiraling upwards. This is the updraft. Over here, it's kind of dark, kind of cloudy. That is the downdraft. That is where air is coming down. So the fact that these two are separate allows us to keep this updraft going without choking it off with rain coming down. So air goes in like this, it spirals upwards, kind of like this, because remember, it is feeling the full dynamics of the changing wind with height in the atmosphere. Over here, you'll notice a cloud base comes down a little bit, is a little bit rugged right here. This is the wall cloud. So if a tornado was going to form eventually, it would be right over here, okay? So that is the updraft. This is where all the air goes upwards. It's a really cool region. Now, when you have a storm like this, you can have updraft speeds 80 to 100 miles per hour, because keep in mind, this updraft might only be a mile or two wide. Downdraft region might occupy 100 square miles. So we're talking maybe like two to four square miles for all the air going up. And that also bounces out 100 square miles of air coming down. It's just a scaling thing. If you have a region that is this big of air going up and a region that is, say, this big of air going down, this has to be a lot faster than that, which is why updrafts tend to be incredibly strong. So think about it. If you have air moving upwards at 80, 100 miles per hour, any raindrops that are in that storm, and you know there are certainly raindrops in the storm, are gonna be suspended. Now on radar, that actually makes a void. We call that the weak echo region or the bounded weak echo region if it looks like a donut on radar because there's literally a region where rain is unable to fall. That signifies a very strong updraft. Now, those raindrops can become suspended for so long that they get pushed all the way up above, say, eight to 10,000 feet. That is a freezing layer for most of these supercell thunderstorms. And keep in mind, these storms might tower to 40, 50,000 feet tall, so there's plenty of room to get sub-freezing temperatures. And with all this buoyant air moving upwards, anything up here is going to freeze. So you get little raindrops, you get super cool water in the upper levels of the atmosphere. These raindrops might start to merge, coalesce, and form bigger hailstones. And those ice cubes might start to go up, they fall back down, they get lofted back again to the updraft, they keep going through these cycles. And so they can remain suspended for an extended period of time and grow to baseball size, softball size, and they start to fall at 100 plus miles per hour. So it's not just that this is extremely large hail falling, you can get hail falling at crazy speeds that, I mean, picture standing outside, someone throwing a baseball at you at Major League Baseball speed at 100 plus miles an hour, that's gonna leave a mark. That'll kill you too, so you don't want that. Okay, so here's the updraft. Over there's a downdraft. So the reason this remains kind of long lived is because the air is making this path. And so these two stay completely separate. The other cool thing, you can just barely see Let's put on some blue. You can just barely see, I don't know if you'll see in the monitor right there. Here we go. This little region right here is showing a little bit of like a hazy appearance. Now that's on the back side of the updraft. So in other words, warm moist air is moving in like this from the east southeast. This is what we call the inflow notch. On the back side of this rotating updraft, way back here in the distance, 
there is air reaching back around from the west-northwest. There's a rear flank downdraft. It's yanking down a bit of the precipitation, which is why when we look on radar at a supercell thunderstorm, it oftentimes makes a shape like this. Here's that inflow notch we were talking about moments ago, if I can change colors. Here's the inflow notch where the warm air is going in. Here's that rear flank downdraft where the cool air is wrapping around. That's this part back here. So right here would be where the updraft is, right like this. That's where that air is wrapping around, tightening the spin. So if you get a bigger hail, that's oftentimes a good sign that you're trying to wrap around that cold air and tighten the spin. Okay, so let's fast forward a little bit and see what's going on with this storm. So once again, we get a really clear view of that updraft. It's having a good wall cloud, a little bit more rugged. That's a sign of stuff really getting juiced up with this storm. And even on the side of the updraft, you can see the clouds are kind of leaning like this. They're all spiraling into the storm. Okay, so now we see Aaron is in the thick of it right now. He, he's driving through, the windshield is starting to shatter, and you get these spider webs. And usually it takes until, and we can play this through, it takes until we get to roughly golf ball size, to so maybe hen egg size, to start shattering windshields. And believe me, I've shattered my fair share of windshields. Personally, I love it. My insurance doesn't love it, but whatever. You see more shatters just appearing all over the place. And Aaron is very lucky he didn't have the windshield bow out because that can't happen. Fortunately, windshields are made with multiple layers of glass. So even if you break one, it's tough to break all of them. But in a storm like this, you can very easily do it. Now, folks are really moving along at, at quite a big rate of speed. And you never want to do that, too, because if you have a car, let's say, let's Okay, you have half a car. There are budget cuts, it's 2021, you have half a car. Cars moving like this, if you have a piece of ice moving down at 100 miles per hour, and you're moving forward like this at say 40 miles per hour, you're kind of compounding that enough to have a, a big impact. So over here we see people trying to crowd underneath trees, under overpasses, awnings, overhangs, anything they can do to shield their cars from the giant hail. Now, if you're on a roadway, you never want to do that under an underpass because even if you're temporarily escaping the hail, other people may not see you, may not be able to slow down, may have a, a clogging of a traffic jam. You just don't want that, believe me. It's, it's bad news there. So here, at least, people are pulled off the main road. They're trying to shelter under trees. These trees are getting absolutely shredded. Now, if there were wind in this storm, which there very well could be in the rear flank downdraft, you don't want to park underneath a tree because it wouldn't take much for a big gust of wind to come and already just knock down this weakened tree. But you can just barely see, not sure if the monitor at home will pick this up, leaves kind of coming down as this tree is shredded. Now the cool thing, look at these crater-like explosions of icy shards where these stones are actually impacting the pavement and just shattering outwards. Here, okay, here, here's a good one in Aaron's windshield where the whole thing is now starting to hit that inner layer of glass and really shatter and just be, be nasty. The cool thing too, visibilities are starting to drop on the second roadway over here, the opposite direction of the highway, you can just barely see a tinge of white above the road. The hail rapidly cools the ground enough to condense the moisture in the air just above it. You get a very thin layer of hail fog, which is why like back here, we're starting to just barely see a bit of fog above the surface. Let's get rid of that. I guarantee you give this scene about 20, 30 more minutes after Aaron was gone there'd be fog just about everywhere. So even after a hailstorm, it's dangerous to drive because A, there's fog, you want your low beam headlights if you can, but still visibility is very poor right along the surface. And B, you can't see any issues with the roadway that may have occurred, debris in the roadway, or icy shards all over the place that will make driving even more difficult. Again, here are people hiding underneath these awnings, trying to escape the hail. And you can see some real big ones down here. Like these are probably, there's one that's about three inches in diameter. You can tell pretty easily from the video. I mean, to get this amount of damage too from a storm, it, it's a, a meaty storm. There's no small potatoes there. This one's kind of cool. We're seeing like a frame by frame of the hail as it's falling. I'm amazed these folks have kept their windshield. But the kind of cool thing is that once you get to the really big hail, you have more ice going into a single hailstone. And so you get fewer hailstones spaced more widely apart but they're bigger. So sometimes you can wind up lucky. I've been through big time hail storms where I wind up a little bit lucky, other times not so much. And here now you're seeing a spattering of smaller stones, but I am gobsmacked this person kept their windshield. Colorado, this license plate from Colorado. Colorado is the hail capital of the United States. I think Carrico, Kenya is a hail capital of the world with more than 200 days of hail every year. 
The thing though, they don't see big hail just because they're on a plateau and so you don't really get very strong thunderstorms, you just get, you're, you're up in the atmosphere, I like, think like 13,000 feet in, in Carrico, Kenya. And so it's easy to get small chunks of ice to the surface. Okay, here's the most amazing part. So you're getting a rainbow. Yeah, rainbows are cool, whatever. But this, let's pause it right here. All this buoyancy went up and outwards. So you go up, the updraft goes up, hits the tropopause at about 50, 60,000 feet, fans outwards, has so much buoyancy, it actually starts to curl back down and you get these pockets of mammatus. So right over here, you get those pouch-like pockets about 30 to 300 feet across, just absolutely gorgeous to see. Here's the flanking line. So we're looking south right now, flanking line as the cool air exhaust from this storm is kicking up new turrets of clouds that are feeding into the storm and could eventually become storms of their own. And then you get what we call transverse banding, meaning kind of the epicenter, the center of the updraft is right over here. The updraft is going up, the air is fanning out in all directions, and so you're pushing it away like this off the west, and so you get that banding in the upper atmosphere. So there you see it. And the best part for Aaron, he has a great dinner option. McDonald's, Wendy's, or Arby's, all great french fries. So Aaron had a great chase, got some mumbo hail, got a good supercell, got some epic transverse banding. Because this thing is so high, even after the sun sets, the ground is darkened, he still gets these wonderful colors right around, I'm gonna guess this was taken about eight o'clock at night. So yeah, a good chase. And as always, Aaron gets the really cool stuff. This part I absolutely love because you can see the ground is getting darker. The sun is moving below the horizon. So only the highest elements in this video are actually illuminated by the sun, those nice peachy pastel hues. But look at that transverse banding, just like we said, goes up and shoom outwards. And then obviously you get the mammatus just captured brilliantly. So one of those videos that you just have to imagine being there in person for was just surreal. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.